terms of my coaching process, there are essentially five parts to my coaching process, and they happen in no particular order. But the first one is, at some point, we're usually dealing with life purpose, their values, identifying what their passions are, and trying to figure out how they're going to spend the rest of their days on this planet in the most rewarding way possible. The second part is about goal setting. So I work with clients to set goals that are smart, that are measurable, achievable, reasonable, and time-oriented. And then we develop the strategies and tactics that will help them get there. The third part of my coaching process is about dealing with barriers. Where, uh, clients are clear about some of the barriers that have come up in the past, but we deal with the ones that also come up during the coaching process. And then we develop what I call obliteration plans, where we actually you know, get rid of those barriers so that people can move forward. The fourth part is about dealing with bravery and exploring bravery and calling upon our valor in order to step into bold action in our lives. And then finally, the fifth part is about accountability. My biggest job as a life coach is to help people uh, do what they say they're going to do and keep them accountable for that. And I have so many great tools to do that, like the phone and email and texting and so forth. But the single biggest tool that I have is the uh, cell phone camera. It's the coach's best friend. Nothing proves to me that you've done an assignment like a picture taken on your cell phone. So I use that uh, quite frequently in my coaching sessions. The type of people that I deal with typically on a day-to-day -day basis really span the spectrum of uh, the human condition. I work with people who are young and old, who are gay or straight, who are male or female, who are single and married. Um, so I don't really work with a, a particular type of person, but I would say that I work with some, some groups. Um, those would be professionals, people who are in transition, and then people who are dealing with health and wellness issues. So for professionals, I'm often helping them uh, enjoy their careers more and get more out of their careers, mastering work-life balance. And my, my most favorite is when I'm helping people start businesses that radiate out of their life purpose and passions. That's always great. With people who are in transition, uh, my job is to help kind of minimize the pain and maximize the pleasure of the transition process. So whether someone's moving from single life to married life, married life to single life, or from work life to retirement, whatever that may be, I work with them to, to maximize the pleasure in that process. And then in terms of working with people on health and wellness issues, there's such a vast array of things that I deal with. For example, I deal with a lot of the weighty issues, emotional issues uh, that come from carrying weight for many years and during the process of losing weight as well. Um, I help clients who are changing their body shapes. I help people who are embracing certain disease states or accepting certain physical limitations. Um, there's a quote that I love that I just have here in front of me from Janine Roth, who's this amazing uh, author and seminar leader in the world of emotional eating. And she says that the shape of our bodies obeys the shape of our beliefs about ourselves. And I just love that quote because that's really what I do as a coach every day. I change beliefs in tandem while people are actually changing their bodies. So I just love that quote from Janine. The biggest difficulty people have um, in achieving major goals in their life without question is fear. Fear of change, fear of success, fear of failure. And I, I actually love working with clients around fear because when I can get a client through a baby step to in facing fear, they're, they're infinitely more willing to go at fear again. And once we start that process, life opens up and really starts to move forward quite quickly. So I love, I love working with clients and getting them through things they're scared about. There are, of course, the external blocks that stand in the way of people reaching their goals. There's lack of money, lack of time, uh, lack of resources, lack of education. And so we develop action plans together that will help us get more of those things. But without question, the most difficult blocks that come up are the ones that are internal. Um, and I have a little chart here. I call them the gales. These are the internal blocks. Gremlins, assumptions, interpretations, and limiting beliefs. The G stands for gremlins, and yes, it's the one from the movies that you think of. Um, and the gremlin is that monstrous little voice in your head that tells you that you're not good enough or that you're not worthy. And so I coach clients about identifying their gremlin, giving it a name. Oftentimes we make it tangible through a, a toy or some other object so that people can kind of play with their gremlin and disempower it and get rid of their negative thinking. And there's a whole lot more to that. The A uh, block is, stands for assumptions. I work with uh, clients to coach them around the assumptions that they make, that some, because something has happened in the past, that it doesn't necessarily have to happen again. The I block is interpretations, right? So people um, who make up stories about things that have happened in the past, or they crystal ball into the future about what things are going to be like. So I challenge clients on that and try to open their perspective. 
And then the L of Gale is limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs are things that we as humans pick up as we're children about, about ourselves, about other people, and I work with them to break those limiting beliefs and have, again, a broader perspective about what's going on in the world. The three biggest mistakes that people make um, when they're going after their goals are what I call sparkling, hiding, and misguided adventures. So sparkling is when a, a, a client will bite off more than they can chew or go to a wild extreme when they set a goal. So for example, I have a client who will go on a 60-day juice feast but not have any support plan in place um, in order to do that. And so then inevitably they'll fail. And so I coach clients to build you know, little action plans that have achievable little steps that also have little rewards built in through the process. That will actually help clients meet goals and combat sparkling. And the reason I call it sparkling is because it's like a sparkler on July 4th that burns hot and bright and then it fizzles out fast. The second uh, mistake that people make is what I call hiding. This is when clients uh, set goals and then they don't tell anybody that they've set a goal. So I'll have clients who have decided they're going to quit smoking, but they don't tell anybody, their family, their friends, their coach, and, um, and they don't tell them because they're afraid that if they, they fail that they're going to look bad. So when clients are setting goals, I always encourage them to share with as many people as possible, ask for support and celebration as they're going about reaching their goals. And then finally, the third mistake that people make in, in goals is what I call misguided adventures. And that is the client who has a goal, but upon further investigation, we discover that in fact it's not their goal. So for example, I have a client who says that they want to be a doctor, but we find out that in fact it's actually their father's goal and not their own goal. So I coach clients to identify goals that are personal, that emanate from within their life purpose and their values, and that ignite passion when they think about what it's going to be like when they attain those. So those are some of the key mistakes that people make in reaching goals.